Hi. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal with MEM Investment Research. And in today's webinar, we are going to be talking about how you can identify entry points in some of these faster moving stocks. So uh, ideally, you will be, we will be uncovering how to play uh, the pullbacks that evidently come from these stocks that have had explosive moves. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And I'll give a brief background for those that are not familiar. Let's see if I can get my computer working. <laughs> Here we are. So yeah, how to successfully buy the pullback in powerful stocks. And again, I was gonna give a little bit of background. I did start many, many years ago on Wall Street as an assistant on the fixed income trading floor at Goldman Sachs. Super, super exciting period. From there, I did go on to what was called the buy side for a large investment management firm in New York, where I went on to run over 2 billion in fixed income assets. But things got really exciting when I moved out to the West Coast and I joined William O'Neill and Company. Uh, as many of you may know, uh, William O'Neill is the founder of Investors Business Daily, and that is designed to help individuals and professionals uncover these big winning stocks. And uh, for 15 years, I traveled the globe working with top portfolio managers and analysts advising them on not only the broader market, but how to uncover again and get in front of these big winning stocks. Super exciting period throughout that time, reviewing, going over thousands of charts each and every week. And I still do that today uh, with my own firm, MEM Investment Research. I still work with institutions, but I've directed now most of my energy toward helping self-directed investors and sharing all of my many years of knowledge. And again, a lot of it is reviewing charts. It's essential because as we all know, history does repeat itself. So if you are able to uncover the message that these charts are providing you, it's really going to give you that leg up. So uh, as part of my current firm, I do have a bi-weekly newsletter that is put out. I urge any of you that are interested in taking a look at it to go ahead and reach me, uh, our support team, through our website, meminvestmentresearch.com, and we can provide you with a link. Uh, you can go ahead and, and take a look at that. It's it's been uh, gotten quite good reviews from those that are currently actively subscribing. So let's go ahead and uh, move on. Before we begin, I will be showing you a number of examples of stocks. That's, of course, the best way to show what we are going to be reviewing, but none of the information is designed to be a buy or sell recommendation. It's strictly educational. And let's take a peek at what we are going to be covering today. First thing is we'll do a quick review of how you can spot a powerful stock. Let's go ahead and define that, a stock that is poised to go higher. We'll do, a, again, a brief review there. Then we will go ahead and talk about what exactly a pullback is and show ways that you can go ahead and screen for these pullbacks. And then within the pullback, how you can determine when it's time to enter the stock so that your timing, uh, of course, is going to be critical. And then also, we are going to, as I said, use history to give you confidence. And so that's where we are going to be reviewing a number of different examples of these powerful stocks as they pull back. And then at the very end, there will be a special offer. So I urge you to stay to the end. And um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started at the very beginning. I talked about characteristics of a powerful stock. And what I mean by a powerful stock is a stock that is outpacing its peers, where the broader markets might be up 1% for the week. These more powerful stocks are, can be up three, four times that at least. So uh, that is basically, for the most part, what we will be discussing, those type of, of faster moving stocks. So here 
are one of the three characteristics that we're going to review as far as how you can spot these powerful stocks. And one is if the stock is hitting a new one-year high in price, and that is going to be a screen that can be generally easily accessible for you, but it is one way that you can be pointed toward those stocks that are more powerful. They're currently hitting a new high. Uh, and then from there, there are going to be other metrics that you can marry with that. And that is if a stock has strong earnings and sales. We've just completed the earnings season. And for those of you that follow the markets super closely, you may have noticed that Many of those faster moving stocks are companies that came in with strong earnings and sales. That oftentimes is going to be the driver of these more powerful stocks. And then third item is you do want to make sure that your stock is in what I call a healthy industry group. And by that, I mean similar to stocks that are outperforming, you'll often see particularly in periods of strong sector or group rotation, you will begin to see uh, as you study this over time, it will become more evident to you that there are groups at a certain period in the markets that are doing better. The underlying stocks within that group it's doing better. So more recently with the S&P uh, generally suffering since that late January period, there were underlying groups that were bucking that general downtrend. And uh, for those of you that are subscribers to my newsletter, we were alerting you to that all along uh, with the consumer stocks, select tech stocks that were just looking the other way and still moving on uh, despite a tough market environment. So you do want to make sure and pay attention to the group that your stock is a part of that really will have a uh, a significant weight on whether your stock is going to continue to be powerful. And then as we are talking about these powerful stocks and as they move up, these powerful stocks will have a need to pause. And that is where this pullback comes into play. So these stocks are not going to go up endlessly, of course. There are going to be periods where the stocks get what are called overbought. The exuberance is a bit much and the stock, uh, you'll see profit taking come in and the stock will, as I mentioned, pull back. And that for those of you that, uh, well, for the most part, you're not uh, advised to chase stocks. So you these pullbacks can oftentimes be an ideal opportunity to enter a stock that is in an uptrend. So there are some key characteristics that define whether the stock is pulling back or is the uptrend over? Is the stock entering into a correction? So there is one key characteristic that is going to help you determine whether that stock is very simply pausing in its uptrend or is that uptrend over. And we are going to go ahead and show you some examples because this, of course, differentiation is going to be critical, but it is something that you can very simply uh, figure out, so to speak. So as we go through these examples, this will become evident to you. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. This first stock that we're looking at is Progress Software, PRGS, and this is a chart from uh, late last year. It's a daily price chart. So what we are looking at here is each bar of uh, on this chart is one day of activity for the stock. It's the open the close and the high and the low are all evident in each one of these bars here. So again, this is a daily price chart. So what I've done is overlaid simple moving averages. So when you have stocks that are faster moving or in an uptrend, you uh, it's very helpful to use a 10 day simple moving average. And that is the green line on this particular chart, and then a 50-day simple moving average, and that's the red. And so these simple moving averages, quite simply, are smoothed out lines that are uh, taking the last for the 10-day, it's going to be the last 10 days of activity, and plotting the average price 
over that prior 10-day period. And then, of course, the 50-day is going to be a little bit slower moving. It's taking the last 50 days of price activity and smoothing that out into a line. Now, the significance for you is uh, paying attention, again, for these faster moving stocks, the 10 day can be very, very helpful. So let's take a look here. This is an example of the stock in this particular instance, the stock reported super strong earnings. And so the stock did gap up. And this is a phenomenon that we'll review again. But uh, oftentimes, if a stock gaps up in price, one of two things will occur. Let's go back to that. One of two things will occur. One is the stock price will pull back to that simple 10-day moving average. The other is the 10-day moving average will eventually catch up to the price. And either way, what you tend to get is, for instance, this price here, if you were to rather than chase the stock up here, you can see how extended it is from this 10-day moving average. And oftentimes, just eyeballing it, you can see the distance of the peak in price here versus that 10-day relative to historical uh now we did have another, this is another earnings period and the stock did in this case in an orderly fashion, it pulled back 4% was away from the 10 day moving average here and it pulled back very orderly and this would be your opportunity to buy the stock. But in this case, the stock gapped up and it never really pulled back. You just had this 10 day simply uh, go up and meet the price. But either way, these, this would also be a time when you could purchase the stock as the price pulls back to this 10-day moving average, even though it's in a much higher position. Ultimately, this price at this juncture is 5% below this peak in price. So in other words, you're not paid to chase these stocks. More often than not, the stock will pull back and you will be given that opportunity to enter the stock. Uh, as you can see, a 4% difference, 5%, that's going to really be super helpful so that when you have your stop losses in place, you're uh, at, a, of course, a much lower level. So let's take a look at another example. This is a weekly price uh, chart and we're looking at alarm holdings and the tickers ALRM and what I wanted to point out to you here is the same type of phenom but in this case we're using because we are looking at a weekly price chart we have a 10 week which is the red line and that 10 week translates into a 50 day simple moving average the blue line is the 40 week or your 200 day simple moving average so when you're looking at weekly charts you want to use the 10 and the 40 week as your guide and what i am pointing out to you here with this arrow each one of these periods when the stock pulled back the scale it's not quite that easy to determine but you can see how during these periods of about four weeks of an uptrend the stock does pull back another four week of an uptrend it pulls back so it's very very uh, common after stocks again have these multi-week moves to eventually pull back so each of these pullbacks i've highlighted the percent so this pullback to the 50 day here is six and a half percent below your peak in price and then we have another run up the stock pulls back that's 12 and a half percent above uh, so again just to point out and reiterate that oftentimes chasing these stocks is not going to be uh, beneficial to you. You are better served if you have patience and you have a system in place. And there are certainly a number of ways that you can screen for this type of activity where you are asking to see all stocks that are currently within 1% but they are above 
their 50-day moving average. And that type of screen for a faster moving stock can be uh, helpful as far as helping you identify when the stock is in a buy uh, point as it pulls back. And then I will point out briefly too, Using other indicators in conjunction can be quite helpful. So as the stock pulls back, this up here is your RSI, your relative strength indicator, and that's a momentum indicator. You want to pay attention to this dashed net neutral. It's it's uh, if the RSI is above that, you are in good standing. Uh, but if it goes below this net neutral, uh, it's not a definite sell, but it is a negative. So as the stock pulls back, for instance, in this case, you can see that the stock pulled back even down to the 200 day. But as long as your RSI is still positive uh, and you can marry that with a positive down here, we have the moving average convergence, divergence, another technical indicator, again, using this bar, uh, this line horizontal as your net neutral. We are still above that, so you are in good standing, but we'll get a little bit more into that as we move along. So here is another daily price chart. This is John Bean Technologies, JBT. And again, this is a chart from uh, late last year, but it's still going to be very helpful as far as pointing you toward whether the stock is pulling back or is the uptrend over? And we talked about the importance of being able to differentiate that. So here's a perfect example. So in this particular case, we can see that JBT, this is a daily price chart. So each bar is one day of activity. And I have that 10 day simple moving average in green. And the blue line is your 50 day simple moving average. So your first key that you want to pay attention to, we can see that the stock had at least a one month uptrend. And in this case, the stock is by all accounts do some sort of pullback and it does pull back. But let's take a look at what the characteristic that is going to be really telling as to whether it's simply a pullback or more than that. And the first signal is going to be if the stock pulls back and then breaks below that 10 day simple moving average. Now that's not going to be a sell signal by any means, but it is going to be a warning sign for lack of a better word. And so we see this break below the 10 day. You want to pay attention to the volume characteristics. In this case, it is a little bit higher. Uh, the volume. So you're getting a break on volume. And then take a look. I talked about the technical indicators as a guide. So here we are on the top with the RSI. And the RSI begins trending down as this break is occurring. And so for those of you that uh, would stay with the stock, even though it breaks the 10 day moving average, uh, and that's uh, fine, but what you want to pay attention to now is the MACD. I talked about the moving average convergence divergence. This is another momentum indicator. The black line is your MACD and the red is your signal. So the first key way to use this is you're looking for crossovers. And in this case, the MACD crosses below the signal line. So while it's not a uh, Definite sell, these are definite warning signs that should be your first signal that this is more than simply a pullback. So let's go ahead and take you further through the action. So now the 10 day simple moving average, as opposed to being in an uptrend and the stock finding support, now your simple moving average is trending downward and that is not what you want to see. So let's uh, presume that you stayed with the stock once it breaks this two uh, I'm sorry 50 day once it breaks this 50 day take a look at the volume on that particular day so had you stayed with the stock for sure uh, you would definitely be better served to not own the stock if it breaks that 50 day on huge volume now the RSI is very definitely below this net neutral and your MACD is now entering into negative territory as well. So 
This is the type of phenomenon that you can use on a weekly as well, but it is a way to point out and tell you that this action following that uptrend is more than just a pullback. There does appear to be more downside ahead of the stock. Now, of course, it does come back and eventually reverse this downtrend. And what I wanted to point out here on the far right is here is another after a subsequent one month uptrend. It appears to be uh, a pullback and it does break that 10 day simple moving average. But take a look at your position in the RSI. It is very much in positive territory. So this type of break, rather than being viewed as a red flag or a signal that things might be over, your other technical indicators are very clearly telling you otherwise that this is very simply profit taking that does wash out. So hopefully you can see how using those indicators in conjunction with the price action is really going to help you out quite a bit. So here is a weekly price chart. It's Momo. It's an Asian internet stock. And what I wanted to point out to you here is when uh, in addition to using these indicators and using the price action, you also want to pay attention to what is going on outside of that individual stock. How are the broader markets? In this case, I'm pointing out to you that this stock uh, broke down. Again, we are uh, looking at a weekly chart. So the stock broke this 10-week or 50-day simple moving average on huge volume. And uh, from my work, that would be a big red flag. But the other important thing that I wanted to point out to you is this break, not only did it come on uh, the release of disappointing earnings, but it also came, uh, this break occurred at a time when the other stocks in this group were powering to new highs, not all of them, but certainly a lot of them. The group was very healthy. So when you see a break of an individual stock in a otherwise healthy group, that's going to be another signal that you can uh, that can tell you that more downside could very well be ahead for that stock. So here we are, the very same weekly price chart that we were just reviewing. And here is that break uh, following the poor earnings on huge volume. And you can see, in fact, the stock did go on to drop quite a bit from there that was about a 25 percent drop so uh, also in this particular case we are also paying attention to these other technical indicators the rsi turns negative your macd had that negative crossover so all of this together can uh, provide you with those signals that it is more than just a pullback. So here we're looking at a daily price chart. This is Netflix. And I have the green line is your 10 day simple moving average and the red is your 50 day simple moving average. One other characteristic that is gonna be telling is your volume. So what I'm pointing out here, here the stock gapped up on very positive earnings and the stock did uh, go on and as an investor, you're not inclined to want to chase the stock, but here we have what appears to be a pullback and one might think that it could be a good point to enter, but you can see that it does break down below that 10 day as the days move on. And so one of your signals uh, could be how big the volume was during that break. Now, I don't have the indicators over this one, unfortunately, because that may also provide you additional clues. But uh, what I did want to point out to you is how quickly you are uh, informed that the stock may very well be heading low, lower instead of just breaking and then bouncing, bouncing lower. Quite quickly, you can see that Netflix had more uh, downside ahead of it. And then let's go ahead and take a look over here when we have a similar break. And uh, I'm trying to see what this is signaling, but the volume is lighter. Uh, but the other key item that you can see here with uh, Netflix is 
We currently are looking at a daily price chart, but you can see despite breaks below this 10-day, the stock really only pulls back to the 50 and then reignites, pulls back to the 50 and reignites. And I'm pointing that out because many times individual stocks have what I call a personality where they have certain key moving averages that that they will pull back to almost like a magnet and then resume their uptrend. So if we were looking at a weekly price chart, you may stay with the stock as opposed to uh, getting shaken out because with Netflix, you can see historically, it does seem to have that tendency to find support at its 50-day simple moving average. And then here's another example of when a pullback is uh, more than that and it fails. This is Beezer Homes. We're looking at a daily price chart. So here I have overlaid the technical indicator. So you can see the stock had a big gap up on earnings. And again, you're thinking it's pulling back orderly to its 10-day, but it breaks below that 10-day. Now we can take a look at these technical indicators in conjunction. So you can see that the RSI is very clearly turning negative, and then we have a negative crossover on that MACD, and it does, as you can see, go on to break this red line, which is your 50-day simple moving average. And then further on, we get another break. Your RSI dances with this net neutral. It's not as clear-cut as the negative, but I'm pointing out here the importance of knowing that at this point in time, the entire group was suffering. So it's not as if BZH was breaking down while the rest of the group was charging on to new heights. So it might give you a little more patience if you know that the entire group uh, is suffering a bit. And then as the stock moves on, you can see how this is another earnings report and how orderly it just pulls back to that upward trending 50, uh, 10 day. And then again, another pullback to that 10 day as the advance. And you can see the difference as far as this break and then the 10 day starting to move down. So uh, here is another daily price chart, Arista Networks, A-N-E-T. And so again, I was pointing out here how when these pullbacks are more than a pullback, you can use these other indicators. So we've seen that in other several other examples where the RSI does turn negative. Again, here it turns negative. Uh, this is a rather volatile chart, but taking a look at these breaks relative to a period in time where it has a more orderly pullback to an upward trending 50 day. So in addition to paying attention to the price relative to these simple moving averages, you want to pay attention to the slope of those key moving averages. And then uh, here is a daily price chart, BRKS, and it's uh, Brooks. So what I wanted to point out to you here is, again, once we have a confirmed uptrend, and for me, it's confirmed by the slope of these simple moving averages. Again, your 10 is the green, your 50 is the red. You're marrying it with this RSI. So as this uptrend continues, rather than per buy the stock up here, you wait for a pullback. It pulls back. Uh, at this point in time, the stock was 5.5% above that 10-day simple moving average. And that is what is generally would be viewed as extended. Uh, but it does pull back. And you can see, even in this period, it did get 7% above this simple 10-day moving average. So, uh, and as we move further along the advance, it got up as much as 8% above. So using these percents that the current price is above that 10-day moving average can be a simple way of you knowing that the stock is a bit extended and that you would be better served to wait for the stock to come in and pull back uh, because we are still in that confirmed uptrend with the technical indicators telling you that. And uh, rather than chase the stock, oftentimes it will come in and then pull back to those key simple moving averages.
So here is a more recent example. This is RNG, Ring Central, and this is a, has been a big winner for those that are subscribers to our newsletter. We've had this on. Uh, we're well into triple-digit returns on it, but the reason I'm pointing it out here is because not every time when a stock gaps up on earnings will it pull back. And I pointed this out in the very beginning. So here is, this is from February of this year. This stock came out with super strong earnings. It gapped up. And I did, as I said, mention that the stock doesn't always pull back in an orderly fashion. Uh, oftentimes what it will do is back and fill, in essence, digest this significant move. And then the 10-day will at some point come up to meet the price and this can be just as an effective an opportunity to purchase the stock because rather than chase it up here you're capturing it at a price that is closer to this peak at, at uh, this peak here once when it first initially gapped up so that is uh, in fact what is seemingly happening and did happen during this earnings season where oftentimes these big uh, earnings and sales releases, the stock just kept going higher. But again, eventually you will get this period of consolidation that will give you an ideal entry point. And more recently, this is their most recent report of earnings. And you can see how in a much orderly fashion, as opposed to this release, the stock did in fact pull right back to that 10-day simple moving average so that for anyone that missed this gap up, uh, had you purchased the stock here, this is about 9% higher. Actually, it's yeah, higher than this opportunity here to wait for that pullback to get into uh, the given stock. And yet another example. So what I wanted to show you here, this is Boeing, and we're looking at a weekly price chart. This is taking us back to last fall. So what I was wanting to point out here is you can see it had many successive up weeks and at some point the stock will give pause and in essence back and fill as I said uh, digesting this significant move. So in this case the 50 day or that 10 week moving average is your guide for a pullback after this significant move. And then you can see that the stock did have another four week uh, big move here, but again, it very orderly pull back to that 50 day or 10 week simple moving average, giving you that opportunity to enter the stock as long as your other indicators are indicating that the stock is still in an uptrend. And then also pointing out to you that you can use different simple moving averages. As I said, each stock does tend to have what I call their own personality. So with this uh, Boeing in its uh, advance having been rather significant, this is a weekly price chart. In this case, I'm using a five week which is this green line and the five week is a 25 day. I'm sorry, it's a 25 day, yes, five week. So, so for this particular stock, notice how orderly and how much it is really in tune with this five week simple moving average. It just very much hugs it. It's being, it's used as support. The stock has a huge one week move, pulls right back. So this is the kind of thing that you can experiment with uh, stocks on your watch list, stocks that you own. So uh, it doesn't have to be a 10 day, 50 day. There are other metrics such as a 25 day, 100 day. So uh, if you find that the stock is not being uh, orderly, if you will, with the simple moving averages I reviewed earlier, you can, of course, uh, switch it around and see if there is a simple moving average that works better for that given stock. And so again, here is Boeing. This is a more recent snapshot. And what I wanted to point out to you here is, again, how you can differentiate that simple pullback with a stock that's breaking down. So you can see the stock is breaking down below these key moving averages. We are looking at a daily chart. The uh, red is 
your 10 day. Now in this case, the blue is the 40 day, it should be a 50 day, but the picture is still going to be very, very similar where in a, as opposed to pulling back, it's now breaking down. And then you can marry that with volume and the negative technical indicators as well to give you the signal uh, that the stock is again uh, doing more than just pulling back. So here's a longer term. So that what we looked at previously was the daily. This is that same chart. It's Boeing, but now we're looking at a weekly price chart. So what I wanted to point out to you is for those of you with a longer term horizon, perhaps you're investors, you're not traders, you will want to use the weekly price chart because that uh, volatile action that we just saw earlier is smoothed out. So this red line is your 10 week or your 50 day. And this is your 40 week or your 200 day. So quite simply, the stock here is undercutting that 50 day. But that said, your technical indicators are still quite positive. We did have a negative crossover, but we're still above zero. And your longer term 200 day is still very much in an uptrend. So these longer term charts will help keep you in a stock for those of you again that do have that longer term picture or uh, time horizon for your investments. So let's see what conclusions uh, we can draw from what we've seen today. Let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah. So. I, hopefully you were able to see that you want to make sure that you're not entering a stock if it's extended. So the way we identified that was looking at the current price and you can again eyeball it. That can be a simple way, but also take a look at the percent above that simple moving average that your stock price is. If it's anywhere in that 5% or above vicinity, uh, the odds are that you are chasing it and the stock is extended. So you ideally want to wait for that pullback. And then here I'm mentioning that you do want to use the broader market's direction and activity in that stock's industry group to help guide you. So in other words, if the broader markets are in a correction as we recently experienced, of course, it's going to mandate your decision making and it's also going to impact the stock. I talked about some groups that were able to withstand the correction. If your stock was not in that group, uh, that's all going to weigh on your decision making. So you do want to pay attention not just to the stock, but what's going on around it. And here I often talk about know yourself if you're devoted, do the screening. We mentioned some screens such as where the stock is relative to its simple moving averages, how you can identify powerful stocks. So that would be, of course, ideal. That's how you're going to learn. Uh, but if you don't have the time, uh, newsletters such as mine, where I essentially do the work for you, I am pointing out stocks that are in their current buy zones. Uh, we have a list now of about 25 stocks, and each week they are highlighted as far as whether they are extended, in buy zones, strong buy zones, and then we're also often adding uh, new positions each week. So that would be another way that you could potentially educate yourself. I mentioned those that want to trial that to reach out, and we'll give you a link for that. And uh, we will be getting to questions. I'm just going to take a minute here and talk about today's offer. And this is for a course, and it does go more into the simple moving averages. I know we've reviewed a lot of it today, but you will get even more informed with this uh, course that talks about pinpointing your entry and exit points, different signals that work with the simple moving averages, and a very, very powerful course today. It is only for $9. I believe there is a link in the chat box. If not, we'll go ahead and pop that in. And uh, you, I would urge you to take advantage of this offer. So let's go ahead. I'd like to take a minute and answer some questions. See if I can access those questions. Oh my goodness, uh, I'm finding the box. Let's see, here we are. 
Okay, so we should be good. Yes, so yeah, someone was asking, is this recorded? Yes, this is recorded. You will be sent a copy of the recording. And um, let's start with some of the questions up here. Uh, Michael talked, okay, so he wasn't seeing the visual but the audio. Well, hopefully, when Michael, when you get the video sent, to you because of course the visual is going to be critical to what we were, have been discussing today and um, Ed had a question about trading breakouts and gaps and yes uh, trading breakouts and gaps by that you I'm sure you're meaning gaps up can be a very very effective way to trade because uh, oftentimes those gaps are simply the beginning and I did give I believe about three different examples of stocks that gapped up and what to look for as far as subsequent activity uh, sometimes they will pull back in an orderly fashion uh, other times they'll trade sideways so you um, can review that and it will give you a sense because again that gap up many times is often just the beginning of a significant move. And then uh, Gerhard wanted to know, how do you trade a pullback on futures? And I will tell you that pullbacks on, even if you are trading commodities or any other uh, and futures such as you suggest, the very same principles are going to apply. So Oftentimes, uh, I'll use that for some of the sector work to see is this, the sector overall extended? Is it due a pullback? So uh, again, you can use what we re reviewed today with futures as well as with individual stocks and sectors and so forth. Um, and then uh, Ken wanted to know, can we use this for day trading? And yes, Ken, you can. I apologize, I did not include an intraday chart, but uh, the exact same principles will apply with your intraday charts. I like to use a 15-minute chart, and the simple moving averages 8 and 13 can be really effective. Those technical indicators are going to be equally powerful so yes intraday trading what we viewed today everything uh, is going to work in that time frame as well so next time I'll be sure and include an intraday chart so that you can get a better sense and a better feel for that uh, and I don't see any other questions, but I'll certainly be happy if someone else would like to have any questions answered, or you can, as I said before, you can always reach out to our support. Uh, go to our website, meminvestmentresearch.com, and there is a contact us, and we always welcome getting any kind of questions and any feedback. Uh, we, we enjoy sharing our knowledge. Uh, and so, Michael, you mentioned that you cannot see the visual and you're having difficulty. Uh, as I mentioned to you, you will be sent a recording. I, it's hard for me to determine why you might not be, be able to see that. Uh, but once you get the recording, you should be able to work that out. Uh, so I am getting a number of questions on whether this is being recorded, and yes, uh, as stated, it is. Um, and Sammy wanted to know the link to the entry and exit course. Yes, I'll go ahead, Sammy, and look into that for you uh, so that you can have access to that course. And uh, for Unless there are any other questions, we can uh, sign off for today. But again, uh, and Bob, you're welcome. I'm glad that you appreciated today's webinar. Uh, and hopefully you guys will review the recording because I know for me, oftentimes looking at items more than once can really help bring the point home uh, and point out things that you may have missed. So. I'm going to sign off for today and again encourage 
uh, you to go ahead to my website and take a look. We have other courses there. We have other informative educational pages and uh, look forward to seeing you at the next webinar.